Warning, this video will offend some viewers. If you dislike Lake Powell or information that may counter commonly believed narratives and propaganda, please leave now. If you intend to leave angry and threatening comments, they will get no response and may be automatically removed. Viewer discretion is advised. For those of you who do not know what that means, it means you need to make a conscious decision if you want to watch this or not. You have been warned. Lake Powell has fallen to dangerously low levels. It Water levels at Lake Powell have dipped below a critical threshold, threatening the source of power that millions of people across the United States rely on for electricity. Thor here, and I would like to say I have no intention of sharing things with the express intention of creating fear, panic, sadness, and pain. As I just showed you, you can go just about anywhere else for that. Right now, that is what sells, and it would appear as though many people want that in their life. And as you just saw, there's a lot of coverage about that, as most media only shares bad news because that is what makes them the most money and garnishes them the most support. What I am here to share is what it was really like in Lake Powell in 2022. All the footage you are currently seeing and in the rest of this video is of Lake Powell through the year of 2022, and I will be sharing more like this for the rest of the year, even though it would appear as though most would prefer not to support positive or neutral content considering my subscribers subscriber count and view count compared to creators and corporate entities that show almost exclusively negative content. It is either that or I am creating terrible content that no one wants to watch or some kind of combination of the two. I will admit it does make me sad that they get a lot of money to create those things while I literally don't even make enough to cover a small fraction of the fuel it took for me to create this content. However, that is out of my hands and in yours. My point to this long intro is that I don't blame anyone for not coming to Lake Powell this year. There's a lot working against Lake Powell, and the times have been particularly hard for these last few years. I of all people definitely understand that. Moving on, Lake Powell this year was amazing. Even with Lake Powell's low water, seeing the sights and scenes I have seen has been a blessing and a life experience I will not forget. I often hear so many people tell me it is so sad that Lake Powell is low. The overwhelming majority of people I have met that say these things never went to Lake Powell this year. They just drove past it, or they never even bothered to come near it in the first place. Recreationally speaking, Lake Powell is a paradise this year, just like it has always been. The fishing was great, the beaches were paradise, and the boating is amazing, even with Lake Powell's low water levels. Anybody who did not come to play at Lake Powell because there was not enough water this year really missed out. To be honest, their loss is my gain, so I suppose I shouldn't be upset, but for some odd reason it does make me sad that they did not come. For those of us that did spend time on Lake Powell and were not scared off by all the Lake Powell is dry nonsense and Lake Powell's low water levels, we were greeted with some pretty amazing things this year. There was plenty of room for houseboats, tin fishing boats, and everything in between. The lake is still over 150 miles long and there are still places that are over 400 feet deep. There were many dramatic canyons, and there's still a lot of bays to go hide in. Sand conditions were particularly good as the sand that has collected underwater was exposed and new untouched beaches appeared for the first time in history thanks to Lake Powell's low water level. We did have some issues with tumbleweeds this year. This was because of the superseding event that happened last year and will likely happen again this year. This happened because of all the precipitation that Lake Powell has experienced this year. The monsoons came back in full gale for the first time in well over a decade, and many of us were able to experience waterfalls that have not been seen since the 1960s. The desert turned green, relatively speaking of course. Trees that were dying from thirst sprung back to life, and the fish population was helped drastically by the many spawning grounds that appeared as a result of flooding and small creeks making an appearance again. The ancient marine life of Lake Powell sprang back with a vengeance as triops eggs that have been sitting dormant for over a decade hatched and took their first long overdue breaths of fresh water and air. Even the toads had something to say about all the water from the monsoons this year. And while the monsoons don't particularly affect Lake Powell's low water levels, their contribution does help. Any drop of water helps. Boat launching conditions this year varied, but I think it is important to note that Wawi Bay has had an open launch that is capable of launching any size vessels. Dateline Legacy launch has been open and will be open indefinitely. It also added a massive swath of parking for boaters, so there was actually adequate parking spots most of this year, which is good compared to other years. Dateline Legacy launch is eight lanes wide, and to reiterate, will be open indefinitely, even as Lake Powell water levels drop. Most of this year, except for a couple of holiday weekends, there was little to no wait time at the launch, and it worked surprisingly well. Bullfrog and Antelope Marina were both able to open their launches as well this year, however, they have since closed due to Lake Powell's low water levels. 
Wallweep, Antelope, and Bullfrog Marinas are expected to stay open indefinitely. This year the restaurants were open and I was told that the convenience stores are going to be kept open all year at both Wallweep and Antelope. The marinas were quite busy this year, however rental boats were down this year, a sign that a lot of people did not come either due to Lake Powell's low water levels or the cost of fuel and inflation. I personally spoke with several houseboat owners and folks who rented boats who informed me that they either limited their activities or did not leave the docks due to increased cost of fuel. I personally will admit it has been a unreasonable struggle to get my vessel out this year. I am working on trying to overcome these challenges but I have had very little support or luck. Due to the loss of dangling rope, there was very little activity in the middle of the lake area. Most houseboats and regular boats were limited by range to Padre Bay and Friendship Cove. It was reported to me that past those areas were almost uninhibited most of the season. One area that picked up drastically due to a new large beach appearing in it as well as several new small beaches was Navajo Canyon. The very little I visited it this year, it was a madhouse. Warm Creek, Gunsight, and Padre Bay were all quite pleasant according to the many folks I spoke with about them. Many of these bays are also offering new islands to stay at, or block waves and wakes, another good aspect of Lake Powell's low water levels. Lone Rock Beach was also quite pleasant this year, especially compared to how it can be. The increased room at the beach gave everyone the ability to spread out and enjoy themselves. There is still water at Lone Rock Beach, however, Lone Rock never actually had any water touch it this year due to the Lake Powell's low water level. Many people tried to walk out to it or drive out to it and got stuck in Wawi Creek bed on their way. There were several rescues and more vehicle recoveries at Lone Rock this year than I could keep track of. Without getting into too many details, a few things of note that happened this year was the sinking of the three-story houseboat knockers in the main channel. She went down too deep to recover and is still sitting there. No one was hurt. A rental boat burned to the water line before its fuel source ran out. It was recovered before it sank. There was a missing rental boat for several weeks this year. I have been unable to ascertain if it was ever found or had sank. A cruiser had an injury involving a child while attempting to surf on the cruiser's wake. I was told the child survived but had severe injuries. A aircraft full of tourists crashed in the Lake Powell's main channel. Several died and a few survived. There were several life flights out of Lake Powell due to various injuries, health conditions ranging from broken limbs to heart attacks. There was a false abduction that turned out someone was just tired of being on their friend's boat. An abandoned handgun was found at one of the resorts. Wawip Marina purchased new tourist ferry boats to replace their old ones. They are very impressive vessels. The marinas are rearranging their docks to accommodate Lake Powell's low water levels. As for YouTube and social media related news on Lake Powell, Matt's off-road recovery on YouTube highlighted some of the vehicle recovery, so if you want to see some of that, go to his channel after you finish watching my video. I will add a link in the description. There was also many interesting sunken boats that appeared this year thanks to Lake Powell's low water levels. I even found out a couple of the surface boats were reunited with their old owners. Lake Powell's water levels have also helped Heavy D Sparks find his boat that had sunk. I will include a link to his channel in the description as well. Powell Heads from Instagram supported a stop the drain measure on Lake Powell. I tried to reach out to better understand it as I generally stay out of politics of any kind but I didn't get a response. If by chance Matt, Dave, or Powell Heads watch this, feel free to reach out and say hello. I would be happy to meet you. Last but certainly not least, the surrounding areas of Lake Powell were amazing this year. Due to the monsoons and increased precipitation, ponds and creeks that have been dry for a long time gained some water this year. Due to the decreased tourist season, many of the more prominent features of this area had low traffic. I should note that it was not the case for all of them. The lesser known features were almost completely unvisited compared to normal, which made visiting them and seeing anyone else almost unheard of. Overall, it was a pretty decent year for those of us who decided to recreate around Lake Powell. The reduced crowds and Lake Powell's low water level made for a lot of fun. Now with that being said, I do hope that Lake Powell's fills up sooner than later, but only time will tell. So until next time, this is Thor, signing out.